What's up everyone? Welcome to the first ever video version on Baseball Watchlist. This is a very uh, exciting day for me because it's, I had the opportunity to interview former MLB relief pitcher Turk Wendell who had an amazing 11 year career amongst four teams, the Cubs, the Mets, the Phillies, and the Rockies. Stay tuned and listen to what he has to say. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm excited to have you on for my first blog for my blog. And I want to start off by saying that you had a great 11 seasons in your career, most notably with the Mets. And some of the stats that you had with them is a 3.34 ERA. Um, well, sorry, this is career career stats, 3.34 ERA with a 1.299 whip. But during your time with the Mets, especially during the 2000 season, you played a big part. You had a 3.59 ERA, and your opponents had a 206 batting average, a 312 on-base percentage, and a 357 slugging percentage. And that helped the Mets a ton with getting to the World Series. Um, over that season and your time with the Mets, like what do you contribute to helping you succeed so much? Uh, well, um just a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of focus, a lot of um, just willpower to keep trying to be the best I could every single day, not just to let myself down and my teammates down, but not let the fans down as well. And the New York fans uh, p played a huge part in that. And, uh, you know, just becoming established as a Major League Baseball player in itself um, is, is – refreshing when you get a like a long-term contract I didn't sign one until after the 2000 season um, that security in itself is, is a good um, like I said it's just security that you're not going anywhere as far as you know maybe sent home or down to the minor leagues or something like that uh, unfortunately I was traded shortly into my three-year contract with the Mets which was very disheartening, to say the least. So with that situation, what kept you going? I believe you went to the Phillies next. Like, what motivate, motivate, motivated you to keep going? Well, as an athlete, it's the sheer competitiveness of not to fail, the fear of failure. Uh, I don't think any player gets to that level and plays for that long without being super competitive. and just you do whatever whatever you can every single day to succeed and i think that is why baseball players are the most superstitious players because you have to have that routine every single day and uh, make sure you're on your game every single day at least try to be i mean it doesn't happen but that's the ultimate goal anyway Awesome. So one more question about um, the 2000 season. I noticed you had a 21.1 strikeout percentage. And you threw a fastball slider and a changeup. Yeah, two fastballs. What was your go-to for that 0-2 count or the 3-2 count to strike out that batter? No, nah, it was usually a slider. My, my fastball just had a natural cut to it as well. So, and it had a slider kind of spin to it or a lot of Times players thought that's all I ever threw was a slider because my fastball cut so much. Awesome. And before you mentioned superstitions, what was your favorite or like story behind it? Because I know you jumped over the foul ball line, you would wave to the center fielder. I even saw that you would crouch down when the catcher stood up. What what's the story behind some of those and why did you do them? Well, a lot of it's just through success and failure. And most of the time, it's failure that you eliminate doing things like jumping over the foul line. I remember stepping on the line when I took the mound in high school and I gave up a run and I said, what the heck did I do differently? I remember stepping on that line um, before I took the mound. Uh, most notably, the Met fans, um, you know, slamming the Robson bag down. I just... Uh, got pissed at myself when I was in the Cubs prior to being traded to the Mets because I gave up a home run to a 
I mean, he's obviously a big leaguer, but he wasn't a well-known player, just a guy that maybe just got called up from the minor leagues or something. And I wasn't as focused because it wasn't this big hot shot, you know, player that I had to stay extremely focused for in a, in a situation where the game might have been on the line. So as he was circling the bases, I just threw the rosin bag down and, you know, yelled at myself to basically get my head out of my ass and stay focused and stay aggressive. And I just carried that on to start every batter after I'd got the previous batter out. Um, I, I brushed my teeth in between innings when I first got to the big leagues because in rookie ball, I had a bad taste in my mouth and I asked the bat boy to go get me uh, my toothbrush so I could brush my teeth. And I went out and struck out the side next inning. So I felt like, wow, I got to keep doing that. <laughs> And that's just the little things, like I said, through success and failure, we're just creatures of habit. Humans are. So that's just how stuff evolves. Yeah, that, those are some awesome stories. And I know you also wear um, a necklace full, full of animal teeth. I believe that you hunted before. Any cool stories from that? Uh, I think most notably would be everybody heard about when I went mountain lion hunting and shot a mountain lion because I ended up spending the night in the wilderness. I didn't know it was going to be 17 below zero that night, but uh, and all I had was the clothes on my back. So my ex-wife, uh, she called search and rescue, and next thing you know, it's all over ESPN and the news that I was lost in the wilderness while lion hunting, and I was never lost. I just decided to spend the night because where I had ended up on this mountain 14 or so miles back in this national wilderness, uh, it was really rugged terrain. Some spots it was waist deep snow and rock outcroppings and stuff. And I just told the guide that took me, I said, Hey, yeah, it's almost dark when I got to the, got the line. I said, let's just spend the night and we'll walk out in the morning when we can see where we're going. We're, one of us could probably get hurt trying to do this at night in the dark. So the next day I walked out and got to my truck and there were people everywhere. And I asked them what the heck was going on. And they said, oh, we're looking for this guy. This baseball player is out and he's lost out here. And I looked at him and smiled and I said, well, here I am. <laughs> so that was probably the, the most notable and one of the coolest animals that I've harvested. Yeah, that, that, that is a cool story. I know a lot of people that, that are going to appreciate hearing that. Some in my family, I, I'm from a bunch of hunt, hunters as well, so cool to hear that. And obviously today's a big day. It's opening day. Is there anything, like there's a lot of talent in the game right now. Is there anything you're most excited to see this season? Well, I just like watching baseball. I like watching the Mets. I grew up a Red Sox fan. Um, I still follow the Red Sox, but I, I find myself, if the Red Sox and Mets are on, I'll end up probably watching the Mets over the Red Sox. I'm excited to see what the Mets can do this year. I was pretty sad to see today that Verlander won the uh, injured list. That uh, and To me, that you know, is great at competitors that – uh, Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer are, I mean, their age is obviously a big question mark. So, um, you know, that's the, one of the factors. Hopefully if these guys can stay healthy for the whole season and the bats are capable of doing what they do, um, you know, hopefully they'll have a really successful season. I mean, but like every team to start the season, usually everybody looks pretty good on paper. It's just those injuries that uh, kind of dictate how the season goes sometimes, unfortunately. And it'll be interesting to see how it goes with all these new rules, the pitch clock and such forth. Um, not a fan of any of them. I don't understand why they keep screwing with the game of baseball. I mean, it's not, it's one of the greatest games ever invented. It's not broken. So why would we keep trying to fix it? And as I, a true baseball fan, I don't know why, I don't know of anybody that says, oh, the games are too long. I want them over within two hours. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I fell in love with the sport when I was younger. Why do I want that change? Um, so my final question is, this is directed to younger players around the world. And I was once one of these. Unfortunately, the dream has passed for me. I'm going to be playing baseball this summer for the first time in six years. But for the kids who are looking to play in the MLB one day, what advice 
do you have for them to continue to push for this dream? Well, it's not easy for one thing. And I would just say, work hard, stay focused, take care of your body, um, you know, eat right, exercise, do the, all the necessary things, uh, have an outlet, not just focus on baseball all the time, 24 seven, do other things, play other sports. Um, I think some athletes today, especially in soccer, uh, my daughter was a soccer player, but even pitchers at a young age, they focus just on that one thing and they only work those muscles. So, uh, injuries are more prevalent because of that. Um, I know there's a lot of ACL, MCL surgeries with soccer. My daughter's soccer team, almost every girl had an ACL surgery at some point. But like I said, if you play multiple sports, you're going to be that much better athlete if you decide to focus on one sport. But baseball is um, it's a game of repetition. And you just have to really, really stay focused, believe in yourself, uh, no one's going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. And, you know, just every single day is a grind. You just have to, uh, work hard. I, I, I would say you have to have a certain level of talent, but the work ethic can overshadow that sometimes and push you to another level. Um, your God given talent will only take you so far. And that, that work ethic, that determination, that sacrifice, um, that fear of failure that pushes you to be the best you can be, the competitiveness will take you the rest of that journey. But uh, I saw lots of players, high school, college, minor leagues, big leagues, have way more talent than I could ever dream of having. But they didn't last as long as I did because uh, a lot of them just didn't – they just thought that that's just the way it's going to be. They're going to always be that good. But there's always someone there to take your spot. Always. I always tell younger guys, you're never as good as you think you are. But just remember, you're never as bad as you think you are either. It's a mental game you have to play with inside of yourself. I remember when I was in AAA, I, the coach asked me how I felt when I was warming up, the pitching coach. And I told him I felt great. And I got the freaking snot beat out of me. So every Because that, that's feeling too comfortable. And so after that, whenever I was warming up, if he asked me how I feel, even though I did feel good, I would say, I don't know, you might want to have somebody ready to go. It's it's just those mental games that you have to play with yourself, never get complacent and never get too comfortable. Yeah, that's definitely great advice. Almost like playing like you're on the chopping block every day. Absolutely, because you are really. There's always someone ready to take your spot. Yeah, and that just leads to more improvement if you think that way. Well, and, and the sad reality, I took it to such a degree that um, I never really lived in the moment. I always felt that no matter what happened, whether it was good or bad, it was over. And I'm only as good as my next batter or my next game. So I didn't live in the moment, that highlight moment where I did great or – you know, all these different things going to me, going to the World Series or something like that. I was always looking forward to the next thing because I saw a lot of players, whether it was they pitched a great game or they hit three home runs in a game, um, two, three weeks later, they're still talking about that game, but they haven't hit a home run since or they haven't pitched very good since. So, you know, it's just staying humble. You know, there's two types of people in baseball, those who are humble, and those who will be humbled because it humbles everybody at some point in time. Yeah, that's that's really good advice. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you so much for doing this. And I'm sure everybody who sees this is going to really appreciate hearing all the words you had to say today. Well, Mark, it's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you. And good luck with your blog. Thank you. Have a good one. All right.